Okay, so we are talking about the um, the three dimensions that um, is referred to by Mensbeck's managerial roles. Okay, he puts it in three big um, categories, um, informational roles, decisional roles and interpersonal roles. And in the interpersonal role, he says that the manager is the figurehead. Okay, so the figurehead means that, I mean, when whoever comes to the company, you are the first um, that they have to call on or you are the, the head um, of the place. And though, so you are the leader also in the liaison. Maybe let's look at that from here. Interpersonal, yes. So you perform ceremonial and symbolic duties. So you, you receive visitors, okay? And things like that. So if dignitaries come to the company, they would want to see the, the head of the, the organization. The, the leader, you direct and motivate subordinates. You train and advise and, and influence, okay? So the leadership role that I have been talking about since. You provide direction, you provide motivation, you, you provide some training, okay? So if you are interested in my personal life and all that, and when it comes to the core of the matter, you are unable to help me, train me, then it's not the best. You're able to advise and influence people. Influence is the biggest part of leadership. And then liaison, you maintain information links in and beyond the organization. So you take information out and bring information in, all right? Um, the decisional part of the manager is the fact that he's an entrepreneur. So he has to take the decisions. He has to initiate new projects. So you carry the vision of the organization. Sports or opportunities. So you have to look around for opportunities it doesn't mean that it depends all on you, but you you lead that process. So if even someone has the, the um, has spotted an opportunity, it is you they would run it by, and you have to decide whether it's something to to go by or not. Okay, so identify areas of business development. So you are the one who will champion the development of the organization. Okay. And then disturbance handler, you take corrective action during crisis. So when good things come, it comes through you. And when disturbance or crisis, like I said, chaos comes in, you are the one supposed to make sure that you melt it down because you are paid for that. Resource allocator. So if there's money, if there's um, cars, uh, and whatever resources that are needed, you are the one leading the allocation of those resources. Okay, you do the negotiation. You represent unit during negotiations. We negotiate for the maybe allocation of um, resources to your department or to your, your unit or whatever. You negotiate for your follow your, your members, okay? maybe benefits and allowances and things like that. You need to be able to stand in for them. And the informational part is where you are a monitor, okay? You seek the and receive information, you scan reports, you maintain interpersonal contacts. And then you, dis, you are also a dis, the disseminator. You forward information to others, you send memos, you make phone calls. Okay, so you do all this. Doesn't mean that most of the time, yeah, the same person is doing all. Others have assistants who aid them. But at the end of the day, it is your call. You are the one who makes these things happen. Hello, madam. Yes, please. Hello, I'm listening. We lost you. Please, um, well, this point that you explained, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to ask, does it really work in most of our workplaces? That's to do what? Um, uh, the decisions and the level. I'm not hearing you. Or would you want to put it in the chat? Thereby causing the other one to function properly as a one. It's what we be experiencing in most of our workplaces. I'm not I'm not hearing you. It's the line keeps breaking. Please say it again. Was it the person whose uh, network is bad? Hello. Hello sir. Uh, yes. Hello. Hello. I was trying to say, say like, hello. So, hello. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. The network is not good enough. If you're able to put your question in the chat, I'll appreciate it so that we can move on and, and finish. So we're moving on to the four functions of management, right? So managers often highlight two roles missing from Ms. Bink's um, list. They think that he should have added manager as subordinates and manager as a worker okay yeah because he makes it sound like it's one all in one but we have managers who are like under another manager so managers were observed in four organizations for two weeks and recording their behaviors in four categories um, communicating traditional management and networking and then human resource management so it was concluded that successful managers spent much more time networking, interacting with outsiders than the less successful. Okay, so if you wanted to be more successful uh, as a manager, you realize that it is those who were socializing or politicking. It's like um, they find a way to play the politics of it to get people outside because they have to sell the ideas to the outside world people who are able to create more connections okay connections are key to the success of any organization and so when people say that uh, um, people are using connections to go somewhere that one i i don't know it's not neither here nor there because you have to know someone if I have a business and I'm looking for someone to put in that position and there were two people available, one that I know very well that I can trust, okay, or some my, my friend's daughter who has completed school, this is someone I know. And you, you always want to deal with people that you have some knowledge of than just um, an absolute stranger. That one, I'm, start, I'm starting from scratch. So there is that preference, even though, okay, my, your friend will say, oh, help my daughter, but you also are trying to help your, your business because you want somebody that um, is recommended by another person that you trust. So that's the basis of, of networking. So effective managers spend more, most time on communication and human resource management. Definitely management, like we have said, is a business, is a business of people. Okay, so, and they were dealing with people. If you take away communication, imagine you are working with people and you don't communicate anything to them. 
okay, whether already or non-verbally or whatever, there has to be communication. Somebody who doesn't know how to send good mails, somebody who doesn't know how to approach people with information, it's very, very, it can um, ruin your management um, process. So Wolf and uh, Mosa confirmed the link between networking and career success. Okay, so networking is a lot. So those of us who want to behave like we are gods of in this world, as if we know everything, we don't need people, you will fail in whatever it is. So the rich people you find out there is because they leverage on networking. They network and, and network and network. So you find them going to social gatherings. And when they go, they make friends. So I, for instance, I don't take meeting people for granted, no matter who you are, you are down there or up there. I recently joined the gym. And when you get to the gym, there are all these, young people um, and everybody thinks they are themselves you know you know how people can behave nobody wants to talk to the other I mean some way be and I'm like hey I mean <laughs> what is it if you say hi hello I mean as I say when you say hello to a guy even the lady your fellow lady it's as if I don't know so with the guys, it's as if when you say hi, you are interested in him or something. And the ladies too, it's like everybody is competing for the, it's, it's just a mess. But once in a while, I try to talk to one, the lady. I started with the ladies, say hi to them. Oh, where do you work? Are you a student or what? And then I take their numbers. And you don't know what good can come out of that because I believe that everybody it's like reaching out to the world. When you, you are able to connect to somebody, you're com connecting to another part of the world on its own. That's how I see people and people matter. People matter a lot. I remember I supervised a student and I realized later that she was an HR to one company. Later on, it was she who took my brother after, I mean, to do uh, um, an attachment because she was at the HR at um, one of the construction companies and my brother was learning civil engineering. And she went, he went there and did his attachment. And it was a very good experience. Eventually, even my husband was, was employed by her. She created an, a place, I mean, even though there was no vacancy, she created one and got him employed. And I was like, this is, this, for me, this is it. And so let's not take for granted um, anyone when we meet them, no matter the platform. Okay. <clears throat> so networking is very crucial to your management. So the four functions of management, um, planning, it's number one, and it's the formal process whereby managers choose goals or identify actions to attain those goals. So first of all, you set a goal and then you map out the actions on how to meet those goals. Okay, planning takes place at multiple levels in an organization and it's an um, ingrained part of a manager's job. Planning is used by senior managers to develop overall strategies for an organization. Okay, then number two is organizing. That refers to the process of deciding who within an organization will perform what task. Okay, so you are, when they say you are an organizer, it means that you are making sure that this one is doing this and that one, just so that every work will go on well. So it moves um, abstract, abstract plans closer to reality. You decide how to allocate time and effort. You develop policies for the HR management team, and then you decide what equipment people need and how to implement change. So very, very important. 
Number three, you are also a leader. One um, third function, you are leading. That's the process of motivating, influencing, and directing others in organization. We've talked a lot about leadership already. So your leading also entails articulating a grand strategic vision for an organization. So leading means leading. You are taking the lead and people are following. So in every aspect, you are leading in thinking. You think ahead. When people are sleeping, you will spend some time to think. I believe that think, sleeping is very, very important. Get your eight hours, but also find time to um, think about the organization, about the vision and things that can change it. And then you have the fourth function, which is controlling. Okay, this is the process of monitoring performance against goals. So you have set the goal for, I mean, from planning to um, leading. Now, what you want to do is to check whether those plans are working. Is it on course? The people you put in place to do this, is it happening? Are you monitoring them and all of that? So types of managers, okay? We have general managers, managers responsible for the overall performance of an organization on one of its major self-contained um, sub, um, subunits of divisions. Okay, managers responsible for overall performance of an organization or one of its major self-contained subunits or divisions. So um, that's on top. The functional managers, they lead a particular function. Okay, so usually the general manager will supersede the, the, the functions of the functional manager. Okay, so you can do, talk about them as um, like the, the divisions of, of, of the organization. So functional, they lead a particular function. They are responsible for a task, activity or operation. Okay, so such that the, the HR, the finance, you know, departments like that. Then frontline managers, Press. they, they manage, they manage employees employee. who are themselves not managers. They, they, so they are close to the very, the people down there. They don't have any managing role. They are just um, team members, okay. So this is a structure for, for, for that. Um, so the corporate level is where you call the, the, the managers that are the CEO, the top people. The business level is the divisions and then the functional managers, they are the departments, are the different departments. And then the front line managers, they are like, they are close to the people in the different teams who don't manage anyone, okay. Skills of management. What skills do you need? You need technical skills. You need some specific specialized um, skill. So like accounting, you need maybe your marketing, your procurement, okay? Then you need the human skills. We call them interpersonal and, and communication skills. A lot of us write it in our CV that we are very good at this. So your ability to coordinate, influence, and motivate people. So it means... You are good with human beings. You're good with people, okay? You can't be um, a better person and say that you have good interpersonal skills. You, do, you, you are not patient. You can't listen to people. You can't solve problems. You cannot um, resolve conflict. You are arrogant. You, can't, you don't know how to speak to people. Then you are not good with human beings. You are supposed to live in the, in the moon. Okay, you also need to have conceptual skills. Okay, this is cognitive related. It's more of ideas. You have to understand all aspects of the organization and its interdependence. So you need to know the, the, the terrain, understand how it works. Okay, and that is what will qualify you to be a manager. So skills needed at different managerial levels. So at the top level, we need more of your conceptual understanding. So you realize that my, my vice chancellor, for instance, he 
based on his experience. So this is someone who has started from down there as a lecturer, became a senior lecturer, became an associate, uh, an associate professor, and is now a professor. So he has risen through the ranks. And so he has an understanding of how um, a university is run, okay? Because he's been a departmental head, maybe a dean. And so he's familiar with the terrain. So his understanding of how to manage a, a university is on top. So he, he needs more of that. And then he needs, he needs to manage people, but that's not, it's not so much as a conceptual because he he's not directly managing the people as a vice chancellor. He's managing the top people to manage down. Okay, then he has technical skills, even though in this time, his technical skills is not so much needed. It's the, the least part necessary. So my VC, for instance, is a specialist in um, an aspect in cocoa, something, something. Uh -huh. So and um, he's an, he's also um, one of the top publishers because in academia you have to publish. So he has published a lot. So he has that experience. Just that it is not so relevant here, but it is we need it there because whenever he talks and he he displays some of these things, we want to be like him, and it's important. Then the middle managers, you need the conceptual. They like need all of it in the same levels. If, if you are looking at a diagram, you can see um, how it is divided and you see that conceptual, human and technical are like the same size. So they need all, okay? They need to have, because they will go for top management meetings and, and they need to be able to present, represent the idea, their yeah, units appropriately. They need to be able to manage because they manage a larger um, number of people than the VC. Okay, so people like the deans and the directors, they are in the middle managers zone. And then the lower level, like the heads of departments and the heads of units, okay, they need to have not too much of conceptual because for them, they will go for some of the meetings, the top management meetings, not all, just a few they would be working more with human, but more they need technical because they are down there. They need to know who to assign a course to. They need to know how to monitor these lecturers to do their job, but the VC doesn't need that. The Dean is supposed to rely on the HOD for these things. So that's how uh, things work there. So the important managerial skills um, some of them are here, managing human capital, okay, structuring work and getting things done. That's planning, making, managing decision-making processes, inspiring commitment, facilitating the psychological and social context of work, okay, people's psychological um, thinking and social is very important, managing strategy and innovation, managing change, Okay, so using purposeful networking, managing logistics and technology. All these are skills that are needed in management. Then we have efficiency and effectiveness in management. Efficiency has to do with resource usage. When we say that you are being efficient, it means that you are using the, the resources um, in, in, in a very good way. You are managing the resources well. Yeah, being effective is talking about the end goal or the goal attainment. Are you able, after um, you manage the resources, you get um, things at good prices and all that, does it take us to the goal? Okay, so if you're in a construction firm, the goal is to come up with very high quality um, architectural buildings and so on. After you have gone to bring those, uh, you buy your materials and all of that, maybe at a cheap price, but are you able to give quality to your customers? If no, then you need to relook at it. So management strives for low resource waste. I mean, so the emphasis should be on avoiding waste rather than just getting cheap things, okay? 
and then high goal attainment. So you want to be efficient and effective at the same time. So there are a lot of changes that are happening these days um, that managers need to be aware. The, the focus now is on customer. The focus is also on technology. Social media is taking a lot. People are doing so much on social media. Innovation is very key these days. Okay, and then focus is also on the employee. Right, so as a manager, you need to know these. There's also the aspect where changing technology that's being more digital. This is ba Baumier's area. <clears throat> yeah, so we are shifting organizational boundaries and um, to virtual workplaces. That is why I can sit and, and teach you from home first it was almost impossible to do that. It was going to be seen as a climb for me to say that I'm sitting at home and teaching students. And, but now it is, and it has helped me a lot as a woman to be able to run my family, take care of my children and also work at the same time. More mobile workforce, okay? Flexible work arrangements, okay? These days people can vary <clears throat> their work they can decide that I will do this and uh, be able to work even at night. Okay, empowered employees, empowered employees. Um, dictation has empowered them. Work life, personal life balance, like I my, using myself as an example, social media challenges. Because social media these days has given people a lot of power because they have information. This now, whatever you need, just get onto the social media and you get it. And that gives you a lot of power, makes it easy for you to do a lot of things. Increased emphasis on organizational and managerial ethics. So these days, ethics is very, very important because of the technology um, issues. Um, so you redefine values, rebuilding trust, Increase accountability and respond and sustainability. Okay, then increase competitiveness a lot. So even though we are getting more digital and be more careful, we are also competition is increasing because other people too are having access to these platforms and are making strides. So your competition will be higher. Then changing security threats. Now the threats are more cyber security issues because of grow, growing technology. Okay. Um, people are having more mental health issues also because they're stressing themselves with social media and things. They need that support. Um, discrimination concerns, diversity is all over. Uh, restructure workplaces. So uh, uncertainty over economic climate, okay, especially in our parts of the world. So um, I need us to read about administration and management, what you think the difference are, and that we talk in our next class. Right, so any questions or any contributions? on what we've talked about. I want to believe that I have recorded this bit, so I will try and upload it maybe on YouTube. I have a YouTube page, just that it's mostly for um, lectures like this. So I'll upload this there and then we can, um, and I'll send the links to you. So you can subscribe to my page also. Also look for me on TikTok and, and subscribe.
Okay, madam. Okay, so I'm stopping.